Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight, angels. And this is what we are going to be on the new Solaris 2, or if you have the Solaris with the Kit 2 upgrade, this is a new little toy you get to play with. It's called an end point sticker. Now, for those of you that have had a destiny or still do have a destiny, or the Crescendo, the Unity, you has, had a sensor pin on the side of the machine where you could actually use that sensor pin to put an end point for stitching to stop. That's what these stickers do with the Solaris 2. And that's what we're gonna play with tonight. Okay, so what I am going to do, I'm gonna be switching between the needle cam and the my IQ cam. So we're gonna switch over to the IQ cam so I can show you how to set up your machine to do use the endpoint sticker function. Okay. Okay, so let's get out of this. First, we're gonna go into our settings menu and we're going to go over to page number three. And right here at the bottom, this is a new feature in the Solaris 2, or if you have the Solaris Kit Upgrade 2, the endpoint setting, temporary stop. I'm gonna leave that off at this point, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. I'm gonna leave that off, click on OK. I've already pre-selected a candle wicking stitch. And now if you look right here in this corner, there's that endpoint sticker. Check it out. We're going to take one of these off. I'm going to place this on my fabric here in just a moment when I switch to the other sticker. Right now, I'm going to click that on. And my projector over here in the needle area came on. You'll see. And this is, it's just going to stitch it right up to the end. So I want to place my sticker an inch and a half on either side of the center line where I'm actually going to stitch. Let me swap over and I will show you what I mean. Okay. Be still, Mr. Cameron. There we go. So, I want to stitch right down the center of this piece of fabric. And where I laid the little sticker, that is the horizontal line the stitching will stop at. So just imagine if there was a line drawn across this way, oops, up a little higher. If I had a line going right here and this is where I want the stitching to stop, it's going to stitch from here to here and stop when it intersects this point, watching using the projection system. Okay, so we're going to start this. And I want you to have a much better view, so I'm going to move this again, or attempt to. I will move it again. It's just a matter of getting, ooh, that's a pretty, you know, it's upside down. It's not going to work. Yes, last minute fun of live presentations. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to hold on to it with one hand and I'm going to stitch down this way. And once it gets down here to this sticker line, it will stop. What I'm doing, I'm holding this little camera right in front of me in my eyesight. Hey, that's actually a pretty good shot. <laughs> and this is, I have the end foot on for candle wicking. And you can see, if you can, I'm going to stop sewing. You can see this projection line, how it has lined up perfectly. Let me see if I can get you a better, there you go. See that faint blue line? That's the projector from the Solaris already trying to line up the endpoint with that sticker. Let's just continue sewing.
and that's not that is just a camera glitch where it's showing the rainbow so there's no way around that but you can still see that line on there once we approach that line and it gets close to that end point it will start to slow down all on its own and it's done let's get that off and that's what that endpoint sticker system is for. If you're, if you know where you want your decorative stitching to stop, that's what it shall do. Right there. Pretty cool, right? I, I, I'd always used the sensor pin before on the Crescendo or the Destiny. Yeah, but the sticker thing is pretty cool and it actually uses the projection system on the Solaris in order to do that. Pretty cool. There's yet another way to use those stickers and we're going to find that out next. So this is where, <clears throat> let's say you're decorating a, let's say you are embellishing a quilt top. Oh, and lo and behold, here I have one of my little quilt tops I've never quilted. I have a lot of those hanging around. And I was going to embellish this anyway before I finally quilted it. Just to make an, it's a nice size. It's about 24 inches square. It'd be great for a table topper, quilted table topper. It's a churn dash pattern. This was actually one of my AccuQuilt samples when I traveled for AccuQuilt. Okay, I'm just going to get this laid out here. All right. Now, what we're looking at here, let's say the second way to use the endpoint stickers, I'm just going to bring it over here so we don't have that. Let's say I wanted to stitch from this intersection right here and stop at this intersection. Now, this time I'm going to go over to IQ. And I'm going to set it up to do a different function because we can also have it. Yeah, let me get this moved right here. We're going to go back to our IQ camera. Okay. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go back up to my settings menu. Yes, click on OK. <clears throat> and first, though, I'm going to select me a decorative stitch off the decorative stitch menu. And I'm going to go over to maybe number eight. No, number seven. Yes. And let's pick one of these. Uh, one thing about these machines, whether it's the Altair or the Solaris, there are so many stitches to pick from. How does one choose? I kind of like... What do I like? Uh, I am going to use <clears throat> this zigzag candle wicking here. That's a pretty big stitch. It's got a lot of width to it. I don't want that for this. So this would also be a great way to do, um, to embellish crazy quilts with if you're not doing it in the hoop. I know what I'm looking for. Where are you? Do, do, do. You were right up. Maybe it's another menu over. This looks promising. Those are narrower. I don't want it to have to actually go <clears throat> and make like a 20 millimeter wide stitch. That's why I am still looking, but I'm close to where I want to be. I actually want one of these. Is I want, and this is on my actual quilt, okay? I don't want to rip it out, so I'm actually going to leave these in here. 
and I am stitching with black thread because these bright colors, I thought black thread would really help make the colors pop and get a little separation. I'm going to pick 9-46. That looks interesting for some reason to me. That is the one I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now that I have my stitch selected, I'm going to go up here to the menu, go to page 3, and I'm going to turn on endpoint setting temporary stop. So when it's turned on, you can put the sticker right in the corner where you're wanting the stitch to stop on the actual stitching line. And just like magic, it is going to slow down and temporarily stop before it gets to the sticker so you can remove it and then it will finish stitching out. Okay, that was a mouthful, but you're gonna see what I'm talking about here once I switch back to the other camera. Uh, it's easier to switch to the other camera when you grab the correct mouse. I have a mouse on my Solaris as well. Okay, so I am going to do this line right here. Oops, right here. So I'm going to put this little sticker and I'm going to line up those dark lines right. I want that right on the scene line. Okay. I'm going to set the camera down for just a sec. Okay. This will work better. Okay. I will hold it up and get it in better focus once. That is up. Okay. Now you can see, I'm going to hold it close and you'll see what I just did. Can you see that? So there's my intercept. That's where I wanted to stop, right where that dot's at. This is the seam line I'm going to sew on. Okay, it's going to start right up here at this intersection and stitch right down here and stop. That is our goal. We're going to make it happen. It's going to work. <laughs> okay. So. I'm threaded. Okay, I'm going to press an OK. So I turned that endpoint temporary stop setting to the on position. Oh, that's interesting. Let's go to back to our main view. Let's get our... get our main camera back on. There we go. Okay, so before I turn the projector on, once again, now you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to start here and end right here. But the projector is going to do all the work for me to make it come out and stop perfectly where I want it to stop. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to <clears throat> set up my menu screen. Okay, hope that didn't make you dizzy. It made me dizzy. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to our Go back to our IQ cam. There we go. And now I'm going to go up here to where you see this little pencil. We're going to go to this selection screen. At the bottom, we will see the, the endpoint sticker like we did before. We're going to click that. Okay. Now this time I can have it just cut off the pattern on this side or on this side if I select this it'll it'll resize the last pattern to stitch out to make it come out evenly and I'm going to select that okay perfect now I'm going to close that and we'll be ready to sew 
And once again, I'm going to hold the camera in front of me. And swap cameras back to our main view. And now that you're there, so I'm going to put that intersection. I'm going to get that. So can you see, there we go. Can you see that purple line that's projected onto my fabric? I'm going to line that up right on my horizontal line. I'm going to use my foot control to lower the foot right there. Perfect. Can you see how that's lined up? Now it's going to stitch and stop right where that one's at. So let's see how this puppy works. This is so cool. One of my favorite new features. I will be having future Solaris um, Sundays. And we'll be going to be going over a lot of these different features on the Solaris. Okay. So we're just going to power it on through and let it do its thing. And I'm going to do my best to guide this fabric with one hand. <laughs> now, I'm not pulling back on the fabric, nor I ever, do I ever push fabric through. That's what the feed dogs on the machine are for. We're ju just here to guide fabric. That's all our hand should ever be doing. Now, you can see how the projector is already lining up on that sticker at the end point. So, watch what happens when we get a little bit closer. What it's doing, it's memorizing. See how it just slowed up on its own? Now, it just beeped. Now, check this out. There's what it's telling me to do. Removing, after removing the sticker, continue sewing. Now, I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to remove my sticker. And just like the snowman stickers, you can reuse these. So I'm just going to temporarily place that little dude right there. And now it's already remembered where the sticker is. So it will stop where the sticker was. Look at that. Yeehaw! It did it. It stopped right where I had my endpoint sticker stopped. I'm going to press my scissor button, raise my presser foot, and let's check out that beautiful stitching right in that seam line. Isn't that amazing? Oh my god baby lock it is so amazing omb oh my baby lock remember that we're going to start using we're going to make that a viral thing omb oh my baby lock okay any questions on that <laughs> now you get to look at me again <laughs> there we go <laughs> so so that's what i wanted to show you tonight about the solaris we could do this for two years and never go through all the features in one night on, the, on these snippets like this. That's really a totally cool thing. Some of the other really cool features with the Solaris, and I'll just go through the, the touch screen to show you a few of those. And we're gonna be doing all of these in upcoming episodes. So I'm gonna go back to my, what I call my IQ cam. Okay, so I'm going to back out of this. I'm just going to select the home button. And that clears everything when you do that, just so you know. And my embroidery arm will move. So I'm going to go into embroidery this time. Okay. Now, 
This little menu here, this is the quilt border function in embroidery. <clears throat> and I'm gonna click on that. Now, this is the original men original icon in this when the Solaris first came out. There are now, with Kit 2, 15 different border designs. Okay. These two right here are new with the Solaris 2 slash Kit 2. Two color thread border designs. And this is the new, 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 new one. This is the hexagon border design. Pretty cool. I know Mike's already done a, a demo on how to work at that. It's an amazing video. You need to head on over to Mama Boy's Designs and check that out. Totally cool, totally awesome. But what these, for those of you that have never seen this before, I want to explain something. When you click whatever one you want, I personally, I love feathers. When I free motion quilt, I like to quilt feathers. <clears throat> so, design number 13. Look at those beautiful feathers. Aren't they amazing? So if I wanted to pet that around the border of one of my quilts, check it out. I'm now, I selected it. I'm going to click on the set button. And then I have two choices here. Because <clears throat> what it's do, it's going to be a split hoop. A split a split hoop embroidery design is what it's going to turn it into. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. But if you select this one here, it's going to chop that down into four four hoopings, like four quarters in a hooping. Okay. Over here, and there's a limit on the size on this. On this one, there's no limit, and it breaks it down into many multiple hoopings. This is the one I always use. I love this one. We're going to select that. Now, here's where you can put in the dimensions of your borders. 4.72 inches, this is the width, to 118 inches. That's right, 118 inches. So you can make your border, <clears throat> use these embroidery designs to quilt your borders on your quilts. Maximum width of the border for the embroiderable area is 4.72 inches by 118 inches. 118 inches is a really large king size quilt. So if I was going to do that, <clears throat> let's say I had a quilt that was 24 by 24. So I put here 24. And 24 on this one. You would actually measure your, your borders after they're attached to your quilt before you did this step. <coughs> Excuse me. Now down here, we can actually go ahead and select which hoop we're going to use. So on the Solaris machines, the largest hoop is 10 and 5 8 by 16. 10 and 5 8 by 10 and 5 8 that came out with kit 1. The 9 and a half by 14, that is the largest hoop, hoop for the Altair and the Destiny machines. So you would select whichever hoop you have. So I'm just going to select the largest one. Now over here in this area, that's our last, <clears throat> this is actually the width of the border as far as from the inside seam line out to the edge. So what you want to be careful here, you don't want it to go all the way to the edge because you're going to have to have a seam allowance there for your binding. What I like to do is after it's sewn in, measure from this seam right here to the outside edge of the fabric on the border. And then personally, I like to subtract at least a third of an inch, if not half of an inch. I've tried doing it with just a quarter inch, and you can do that, but you might get some overlap on your 
binding over the quilting. So really 0.33, which is a harder number to calculate, all the way up to 0.4 or 0.5 will work. For me, it works really well. That's just where you'll have to get used to doing it yourself by practicing with it. But anyway, let's say that I had, so I can go up to 3.94 on the width of that. So that would mean if I cut a four and a half inch strip of fabric and utilizing quarter inch seams, I would end up with approximately a four inch finished border after the binding was put on. But if I take a half of an inch off of 4.25, which is what that measurement would be if I would sewn it in with a quarter inch seam from four and a half quarter inch seam 4.25 take half an inch off of that I would do this at 3.75 is the number that I would personally use and set okay now I'm going to select next and now it's broken it up. It tells you how many hoopings. There'd be 12 hoopings for this. And I'm not going to go any further than I'm going to go one screen past this, but I don't have anything ready to actually sew out. And this would, would take up uh, the whole hour alone, if not a little bit more to do this. So here you go. You can see how it sets it up. Now I'm going to go ahead and down here it shows you the hooping order. So when you use this, you always begin hooping if you're looking at the quilt laying in front of you in the upper right hand corner and you work around the borders in a clockwise direction till you get back okay that's your hooping order so I'm just now I'm gonna select memory okay it just saved it in the machines memory <clears throat> so there's some of my other stuff <laughs> these other designs here is a hey, I'm quilting on a um, on a stone hinge panel and these are some of my IQ designs I've made for it but let's say I wanted to now quilt that border I just created I'd click on that and now you can see there are all the components there's one the corner one two three four different five different components for that so if I was actually going to quilt the entire border like I had planned to I wouldn't select none of these. I would select on that and set because that's going to be it just automatically selected my first border. Now it's going to show me how to hoop it and where to hoop it on the quilt. And this is where I would actually begin to, to line up that first piece with this corner using the projector on the machine. I'm going to stop here because that is a future video that you all will get to see. Okay. So, and then once that's sewn in, you'd line it up with this point here because it would project the crosshairs for you to line up to the next point and to a point down here on the seam line where it would stop at. Easy peasy. Okay. It's what made you attach the embroidery frame. I'm just going to. Now, I just went out of that, but say I'd, still, I'd already done all my measurements and it saved it. Now it is actually saved in there, so I'm going to hit embroidery again. And I'm going to go to my pocket. And look, there it is, 24 inches by 24 inch feathered border. So it saves it there for you. Okay. Okay. And we're going to back out of that. So that's one of the other big new things in, in the Kit 2 upgrade or the new Solaris 2. Another new thing is once you go into IQ, you know how we all love those quilting fill designs, right? Well, check it out. There's even more now. So we're going to click on the region property menu and click on this and this. And now on the Solaris, there are 42 different fill designs. These six here are the newest. 
And you know, we all have our favorites, right? Well, I can tell you what my favorite is. I love this one here, the different size pebbles. This one is so fun to play with. I got my bucket on, I'm gonna touch my screen, and there is a quilting design done in a matter of seconds. Pretty cool. But there's always so much more you can do with it than just that. So much more. Okay. So do you have any questions? I am looking at my screen now so that I can answer some questions. Let me get my mouse up here. I'm going to switch back to my main view. That wraps up what the demo I was planning for tonight.